Just like we did for the start button, we need to enable and disable buttons when the pause button is clicked as well. The one that we want to enable is the start button. And of course, we need to disable the pause button. So let me double click the pause button to create the event. And I'm going to start with the btn start that enabled. This one will equal to true. And we will disable the pause button. Next, we want to disable the data entry section. Remember from the previous video that rather than going through each element separately, we simply enabled the whole group. So now when the pause button is clicked, we will disable the whole group. So grb data entry that enabled equals false. And finally, we want to stop the timer. So we set the enabled property for the timer to false because we are pausing the timer when we press the pause button, of course. So timer that enabled equals false. And that's all for the pause button that we need to do. So let's run it and see if the timer is actually working correctly. I'll press Ctrl F5, which will build the project and start it, but it doesn't start it in the debug mode, which we don't need right now. So when I press the start button, the timer should start. And here it is. You can see that it's starting. I'll pause it. And you can see that the data entry section is disabled. And so is the pause button because we just paused it. So the only thing that is available to us currently is the start button and exit. So let's start it again. And you can see that now the section is enabled. And now we have enabled the pause button and the timer keeps ticking from where it stopped. So let's try it again. Let's pause it. It's disabled it. You can see that it's at 14, so when I click start again, it will start from where it stopped before. So this is working correctly, as expected. So next, we'll code the data entry section.